And here is the Writer's Almanac for Saturday. It's the 6th of November, 2021. It's the birthday of the Scottish poet and journalist Kate Clancy, born in Glasgow, 1965, author of many collections of poems and a memoir entitled What Is She Doing Here? A Refugee's Story. It was on this day, 1860, Abraham Lincoln was elected to his first term President of the United States. He'd served a single term in Congress. He'd run twice for the U.S. Senate unsuccessfully, had only one year of formal schooling. Newspapers, some of them called him a third-rate Western lawyer. Once he got the Republican nomination for president, Lincoln lay low until the election. His strategy was to let the opposition tear itself apart. His opposition was Stephen A. Douglas, the Democratic candidate, and the Southern Democrats had broken off and nominated their own John C. Breckinridge, and Lincoln won against them with only 40 percent of the popular vote. He won in the Electoral College, even though he didn't get a single electoral vote from a Southern state. And before he even took the oath of office, South Carolina, Mississippi, Florida, Alabama, Georgia, Louisiana, and Texas had all seceded from the Union. As Lincoln was getting ready to leave Springfield, Illinois, for Washington, he told a group of journalists, Boys, your troubles are over now. Mine have just begun. It's the birthday of the novelist Michael Cunningham, 1952, Cincinnati, raised in Pasadena, best known for his novel The Hours, a bestseller in 1999. Michael Cunningham, who was deeply influenced at the age of 15, reading Virginia Woolf's Mrs. Dalloway. He said, I'd never seen sentences of such complexity, musicality, density, and beauty. Mrs. Dalloway made me into a reader, and it was only a matter of time until I became a writer. It's the birthday of the poet Anne Porter, born in Sherborne, Massachusetts, in 1911, who, at the age of 83, published her first collection of poems, an altogether different language. It was a finalist for the National Book Award that year. And it's the birthday of John Philip Sousa, born in Washington, D.C., 1854, published his first composition at the age of 18, conducted a Broadway orchestra by the time he was 21. He was the leader of the U.S. Marine Band for 12 years, retired and formed his own concert band, went on a world tour. He was a perfectionist, John Philip Sousa, and a prolific composer, suites, humoresques, dances, university fight songs, operettas. And on Christmas Day, 1896, he composed The Stars and Stripes Forever, also wrote a full-length autobiography and three novels. Here's a poem for today by Anne Porter, entitled A November Sunrise. Wild geese are flocking and calling in pure golden air, glory like that which painters long ago spread as a background for some little hermit beside his cave giving his cloak away, or for some martyr stretching out on her expected rack. A few black cedars grow nearby, and there's a donkey grazing. Small craftsmen steeped in anonymity like bees gilded their wooden panels, leaving fame to chance, like the maker of this wing-flooded golden sky, who forgives all our ignorance, both of his nature and of his very name, freely accepting our one heedless glance. A November Sunrise by Ann Porter from an altogether different language published by Zoland Books and used by permission here on the Writer's Almanac. Be well, do good work, and keep in touch.